Ooh. Oh, yes. Treat yeah. Yourself Tuesday. Killer sweets that will make your mouth water will take you to this sweet spot to pick up a crispy, crunchy creation. Oh, my goodness. And Zoomagination is here. Wow. They're very wise today. <laughs> Who are they going to have on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. And are you ready to rodeo, San Antonio? Yep. Oh, I, look at you. No, you got your loss already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got it ready. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and look, at, I got it. I yes. got it. Was that your first try? Uh, was it? I we'll think. find out. We'll find out. <laughs> Live from Market Square in downtown San Antonio, this is SA Live. Happy Tuesday from Siena the Sloth. One of, uh, I'd say our favorite, our favorite sloth. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Is here. And we hope you're having a wonderful day. Oh, my goodness. We are going to have sloths the fun with lots of sloth facts. Yes, indeed. All sorts of trivia. And really fascinating trivia that you, I mean, if you thought you knew what you're going to file on, every single I one of these away. I am, and I'm going to repeat this when you don't know. I Good will forget them. Everyone. He will remember. <laughs> I'm Mike Estrange. And I'm forgetful Fiona Gorstiza. <laughs> Somewhere all of a sudden my wife went, oh no, yes. what, what's going to go on yes, tonight? Yes, Bonnie, look out. All these, all these sloth <laughs> trivia facts are coming at you later tonight. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Now. We had a gal come down from the station because she has been dying to meet the sloth and hold the sloth, and it just made her day, kind of her spirit animal, if you yes. will, which is the question, what is your spirit animal? What is you yours? are my spirit animal. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, fuzzy, and gray. I don't know. So, um, yeah, so let us know at SA Live Case Out. What about you? What's yours? What's yours? I just told you. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say a golden retriever. They're I could just, totally see that. Well, I used to I used to have a golden retriever, but just uh -huh. you know, because they're so just gregarious. Laid, yeah, they're <laughs> they're loving and laid back and, and lead you to the family jewels. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> okay. So let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. What's your spirit animal? And why? If you want to throw that in there, we'd love to know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Along with Sienna, the sloth, Robert Trejo is here from Zoom Imagination. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Hi, y'all. Oh, hello, <laughs> we Sienna. Always love yes, you are so sweet. How are you? Hi, babe. Yeah, I He's happy they, to be here. I didn't know they had quite the teeth that they have. They do, Being yeah. Just, Plant eaters. I thought it was just, you know, kind of molars, but. Right. Now, and those sharp teeth are what they use to shred the leaves that they chew on. Mm -hmm. It just it just breaks them up into little pieces, and then, of course, that's what they eat. That's their main diet are the leaves, but they do have very sharp teeth. And they live in the Amazon? Jungle? Yes, yeah. Rainforests, okay. Central and South America. Mm -hmm. That's what they're native to there. Okay. But yeah. So we have got, let's get right to the trivia game, because I want to. Sloths of fun, sloths of fun, sloths yes, of fun. Indeed. All right, I like so, this. Robert has some great questions for us, and we have our paddles, and the first one to lift their paddle gets to answer the question. <laughs> so, go ahead. Okay, here we go. Sloths are slow, but they actually... Um, oh, wait, are we supposed to raise yeah. it? We, okay, they Mike, there you go. I say okay. swim fast. That is correct. Really? Yes. I was going to say that, too. They swim faster than they crawl, and they, and they swim faster than they climb through the trees. Right. Yeah. A Even lot though of, you said that a three-toed sloth can go pretty quickly uh, through the trees. Right, yeah. Movie. So, Did yes. you go over these? <laughs> well, talk to them earlier. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing when you're doing this? That's what I'm I think so. is happening when we I'm We got here a little earlier there. today. <laughs> okay. okay. Question number two. Okay. Question number two. We have here, sloths grow this on their fur. Oh, my. Man. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say algae. That, that is correct. I mouthed it when you I said it. it. <laughs> they, they knew I, Why? I knew it, I mean, too. Well, you know, man, oops, I lost my microphone there. Oh, here, there, there we go. go. Hold on, hold on. Here. There, we there we go. Okay. Got it? We're okay. good, yeah. Well, in the rainforest, of course, it's got everything you need to grow moss and algae. You got humidity, moisture, you got that warm air. Mm -hmm. So not only does it grow on the branches of the trees, but it also grows on their hair as they're climbing through. The, as they're sleeping, it grows right on their hair. But it also aids in their camouflage. Oh, okay. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So Sienna, we brush her. We keep her clean. She doesn't have to worry about that. But if you were to see a sloth in the natural environment, you see that they have a green tint to it. Oh. Yeah, and sometimes it gets really thick. Yeah. Okay. Because in the rainforest, what would their, uh, any, their biggest fear be? They're like predators. Yeah, jaguar, harpy, eagles. So their job is to actually blend in and look like a tree. Ah, oh. that's, that's the, the, the tint. Question yeah. number three. Mm -hmm. Question number three we have here is sloths. 
smell. And, or, you know, yeah, okay, Mike, go Odorless. Ahead. They are odorless. That's correct. You're doing great, though. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I zoned out there for a And I would assume that's also so predators can't sniff them out. Correct. Okay. But what they can do, they absorb the environment. So they actually, if you were to put them in a pine tree, they'd smell like a pine tree. Oh. So they begin to smell very earthy, very mossy, and so that, that also blends in. So that helps them hide. Question number four. Mm -hmm. I'll Okay. <laughs> Sloths are the slowest mammal. True. That is true. That is true. Now, there's two types of sloths. There's a right. two-toed and a three-toed. The two-toed lysiana is the second slowest. The first slowest is the three-toed sloth. Okay. Yeah, they're just a little slower. But and, they are the slowest moving mammal. And you said, which is interesting because, but if they're in the trees, they can move fairly quickly, right? Yes. If they feel threatened, they can actually go from one place to the other and move quickly. Mm -hmm. They don't do that for very long because it's an energy level. Okay. But if they feel threatened, they can move fast. They can actually shake a tree branch. They can stand their hair up on ends. So they can move quick. Uh, a lot of people, it's a misconception because even though they, they do, most of the time they're slow. If they feel threatened, they can lash out. They can move quickly. And they can bite like a dog. And they can too. bite very hard and very, and they have very sharp teeth too. Oh. So. so they have some defenses that will help them with that. So. Okay. Yeah. Next, Next question. question. Sloths have a bowel movement. Fiona. I'm going to say once a month. Ah, that is false. It oh. is once a week. Once a week. Oh, exactly. <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> uh, so I shall let my... <laughs> um, and you said that she, it was her week, and lost almost half her weight? Yes, yeah, so she loses about six to eight pounds every time she goes. Mm -hmm. So last night was bathroom night. Okay. So today she's a lot lighter. She's a lot more energetic. <laughs> lighter. Yeah. <laughs> and why is that, that it's only once a week? Well, it's their metabolism. In their stomach, they have four chambers like a cow, so that it also takes time to process that. And most of the time, they're just eating leaves. So it's like if you eat one leaf or two, then they fall asleep. They eat another leaf or three, they fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So it takes time to process, to digest that food. And by the time it's ready, they're ready to go to the bathroom. They climb down to the bottom of the tree, and that's where they go. Okay, okay. well, since it was... Um, bathroom day yesterday and leads us up to our next question oh here we go oh, when they have to go three-toed sloth fiona do a poop dance that is correct <laughs> they do a little poop dance those, <laughs> they do a little poop dance said too yeah it's a little poop dance it just kind of it's oops there we go again sienna oh, just oh, likes mine there we it? go we're okay. good we're good there sorry right. about that so yeah so she she will like, they'll climb up and down. They kind of move up and down a little bit. It's just kind of interesting how they move it, but it's part of it is to kind of make their body move a little bit. Okay. And yeah. a couple of the things you pointed out, the only fat on their body are on, their... on the pads of their feet. Okay. And they don't have much muscle. Correct. They have the least amount of muscle of any mammal. Uh, and it's lean muscle, but they're using tendons to lock their arms in place, and that's how they hang. Like a bird sits yeah. on a wire. It's just tendons. Yeah. It just sits there, and they can sleep effortlessly without using any energy. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, if you'd like more information about Zoomagination, and also he does uh, parties, go to salive.com, and we are going to be hearing a lot more because Robert has brought some of Sienna's friends with him, and we're going to be meeting them just a little bit later on. Okay, well, from fun animal facts to fun cereal creations, this is some serious stuff. And I don't think this is just your <laughs> evening bowl of cereal kind of stuff. David Alder takes us inside Cereal Killer Sweets in today's Elder Eats. Cereal Killer Sweets is a rice cereal marshmallow treat company created by Megan Morales of Pink's Popcorn. They are making huge marshmallow cereal treats and some are packed with a Nutella or chocolate surprise. One of the trays of treats are made with a little over a gallon of marshmallows and over a gallon of cereal. There are all different kinds of flavors to choose from, like their cookies and cream cereal killer treat made with Oreos and Hershey's cookies and cream candy. When you bust them open, they're still so gooey. Oh my God, look at this one. It's just all kinds of marshmallow -y. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> that is really good. This tastes like childhood memories. If you love chocolate, they have a hot chocolate treat just for you. This is like a little guy. It's like a little guy, but it's still huge. Mm. Oh, wow. This is by far the most marshmallow I've consumed in a short period of time in my whole life. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Coming up with the idea was easy. Megan wanted rice cereal treats over the holidays. Well, the rest is history. And I brought them to the store the next day, and people were asking to buy them, so I sold them. And it turned into what it is now. <laughs> the treats have been flying off the shelves since the start of the business a couple weeks ago, both on Etsy and at local farmers markets. You can uh, go to the website. I have my telephone number and my email on there. You can come see me in the store during the week or you can come catch me at the Hebner's Oaks Farmer's Markets on Saturdays. If you have a rice cereal treat lover in your life, how about getting them a massive rice cereal heart for Valentine's Day? So you're going to be making these giant Rice Krispie Treats hearts. They're going to be strawberry flavored. You get to choose your choice of chocolate and write your own personal message. There are different kinds of rice cereal treats to choose from. Plus, you can customize them any way you want them with a complete list available on their website, SerialKillerSweets.com. So you got to hit up Serial Killer Sweets. They're making crazy rice cereal sweets. And you guys, it's nothing like what you've had before. These are monstrosities of sweets. Look at that. That's huge. Want to check out all the other places I've been to? Now you can. Just go to eldereats.com or follow me online at Elder Eats on social media. Keep eating San Antonio for SA Live. I'm David Elder. Yeah, he wasn't Look kidding when he said that. That's a mon monstrosity. That's I mean, a that, good day. That's as big as your hand. It's worth about, I don't know, how many, so. I don't know, take a bite, take a okay. bite, take a bite. Okay, so 10% of all proceeds made from cereal treats go to a nonprofit, and there's a new one every month, and this month's is the San Antonio Humane Society. Are you good? <laughs> fruity Pebbles, I love that made with Fruity Pebbles. True. I think That's a golden really retriever would, too. <laughs> I'm not talking about a Fruity Pebble. I'll, excuse me. All right. <laughs> all right. Still ahead on the show, Auto 101, what you need to know about recalls. And next, more animals. Yep, Zoomagination has a couple more friends. Who are they? <laughs> I, see what, I see what you did there. <laughs> Oh, welcome back to SA Live. Yes, my mic is already grimacing because we have more animal friends to share today from Zoo Imagination. Robert Trejo, owner of the Mobile Zoo, is of course here today. He had Sienna the Sloth earlier. Something a little slitherier. Now. Yes, a little different. <laughs> it was funny seeing it smaller, but then up close on when it was close on people. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, what is, is that mm -hmm. a uh, python? This is a ball python. Okay. Uh, he's full grown. He is 12 years old and he's four and a half feet long and they're native to Africa. Hmm. And he's a constrictor. So this is a typical average size for a male in this particular species of snake. So that's yeah. it. That's it. Oh, thank goodness. Being, yeah. <laughs> right. There's different species, okay. of course. And a lot of people kind of think about snakes as being those big, giant Burmese pythons or, you know, reticulated pythons or the anacondas. Mm -hmm. But there's different species of snakes. And this particular species, this is it. This mm -hmm. is, you know, and they're just eat little mice and rodents. That's it. That's their diet. And he can, as the name implies, roll up into a ball. Right. So he'll constrict his prey. He'll squeeze. But that's only a feeding response. They only do that when they grab their prey and, they, and then they wrap their body. Right now, he's doing what he's named for. It's a ball python. He wraps his body around a branch or anything, and he just kind of hangs out there. And then sometimes you'll get a really tight little ball, mm -hmm. and that's where they get their name. And, of course, they, they smell with their tongue. Correct. Right? Yeah. So it's a forked tongue. Mm -hmm. It's a two-pronged forked tongue, and so they can kind of have, they can either go to the left or to the right, so the more they flick it out there, the more they catch air particles, and that's how they smell. Oh, that's interesting. How often does he eat? Once a week. Once a week. When, it also when, depends when on their eat prey. Last. He ate on I, Sunday. I know Mike wants it. No, oh, good. Okay. He eats so on Sunday. <laughs> it really depends on their prey, because if they eat a big prey, they could go longer, right. uh, because it takes about 10 days to digest their food. So it really just depends on how much they eat. And during the winter, snakes hibernate. They don't eat. So during the winter, they just sit there and they, re they rely on their, on their reserves. In springtime, they come out looking for food. Now, yeah. even though you said he's fully grown, does he uh, still molt? Yeah, you know, he'll do that every couple of months. Every two to three months, they'll shed their skin. 
and they'll go, they'll, it's the whole thing. It starts from the tip of the nose, and they kind of like rub on it, and it just kind of peels off like a sock. If you're laying off a sock, and it comes off every couple of months. And you then, just find these things kind of laying around? Yeah, just laying off. around and rolled up nice and neat like a little package, and we unroll them, and then we can kind of see, you know, how much they're growing. Mm -hmm. So it's into, yeah. <laughs> I, I've got to ask, when you feed him, does it have to be live? No. Okay. No, we've actually conditioned him to actually take uh, uh, you know, rats that aren't alive. Okay. Uh, and we just wiggle it, wiggle it. So he still strikes at it. He coils, and then we kind of leave him alone, do his, does his thing there. So that's actually a good thing because it also prevents him from being a, uh, attacked by the rat because sometimes rats can defend themselves, and so that kind of prevents him from getting ah, bit. okay. And we've got another one here, this oh, owl. Oh, yeah. This little owl here, this is a really cute little thing here. Her name is Athena, and she is an eastern screech owl. She is one of the smallest owl species in the world, and they're found right here in North America. And you'll also notice that when she turns around, sometimes you can, if I touch her this way, you might, she might turn her head a little bit. Mm -hmm. There you go. You'll notice that she only has one eye. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why she only has one eye is because uh, it was injured. Somebody found her down in Corpus Christi, Texas, so they had to remove the rest of her eye because it, it was just infected. So she wouldn't have survived because it was so badly infected. But for that reason, we couldn't release her back into the wild. Okay. She can't see predators from her right side, but she can fly. She can hunt. Um, so she's still a full, healthy little owl there. Yeah. And do they make a loud screech? Not necessarily. A lot of people think they do, but they make like, almost like a trill sound. So when you do hear an owl vocalize, a lot of people don't think it's an owl. They think it's some type of a night, another night little cricket or type of a night crawly bug there. Uh, but it's kind of interesting when you hear them talk. It's kind of a, it's a neat little sound there. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of fun stuff about owls. And, of course, your program goes out to schools, parties. We do schools. We do birthday parties. Uh, we're also going to be at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo this year. We're going to be doing presentations throughout the grounds. So you'll see us out there. You can look for us. The imagination will be out there. But, yeah, that's what we do. We're an educational program, so we travel everywhere. Yeah. It's fascinating. I love all the, the little facts and figures you have there, all the trivia. So. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Oh, you bet. And, of course, for more on Zoom Imagination, just click, go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, still ahead. A gift with a personal touch for making some creative gifts just in time for Valentine's Day. And next on SA Live, we're kicking off a new series called Auto 101. You won't want to miss it. In today's Auto 101, you get this letter in the mail. It's a recall letter. So what do you do next? Well, we are here at North Park Toyota San Antonio with Daniel Lauer, who is the service manager. So what do I do with this thing? What does it mean, a recall letter? A recall letter means the first thing that you do is the manufacturer realizes they found something wrong with your vehicle. So they're going to send, send you a letter to let you know what's going on. First thing I would do if I was you, I would call your dealership with your vehicle identification number, and they'll let you know how, now, how to proceed next. What if I don't get this letter, but I hear about it on the news that there's a big recall awesome, going man. on. Yeah, do I have to wait for the letter or can I still no, call? No, you do not have to wait for the letter. And there's a lot of recalls that come out there way before the parts are even available. So what you can do if you hear about one and you're concerned about it is pick up the phone, call, call your dealership, and they will check your VIN number. And if yours is part of the recall, then they'll let you know and they can order the parts. They can tell you, well, you're going to get a letter in the mail letting you know when the repair is available. Now, sometimes uh, it might be that the, the widget on the cup holder is going to come loose. That's right. not a big deal, right? It's, it's, it, it, it's not a big deal, but we want to make sure that vehicle is running up to par and up, and up to specifications. Mm -hmm. So what we will do is we'll let you know what's going on with it. And if it's not anything we need, then you can call us up. We'll order the part for you, and we'll schedule an appointment to get you in as soon as possible. But then, like we've heard in the news for the past couple of months, the safety recalls, yes. such as with airbags, those are the ones you really have to take seriously and you yes. can't ignore, right? Yes, the airbags you need to get in. Anytime that it says safety on the recalls, bring them in as soon as possible. Or definitely call the dealership and make sure where it is. A lot of dealerships will have uh, other things that they can do to help you take care of that while it's there. Okay, and the place to do that is back in the service department, right? Back in the service department where you do that. Pick it up, pick up the phone, and we'll take care of you guys. So, Daniel, I, 
called, made an appointment, and bring the car here to the service area. But then my question is, I don't want to be without a car all day long. Perfect. Well, a lot of times you don't have to be without a car all day long. A lot of times we'll, we'll inspect your vehicle, we'll make sure that it needs it. If it, if it needs to be part, and we do have the part in stock, we'll go ahead and repair that for you immediately. If we don't have the part in stock, and we'll just order a part for you and we'll get you on your way and call you when the part comes in. So that's why if I get this letter, I don't just immediately show up and go, here, fix my car. Right. Got to check ahead. Yeah, yeah, check ahead, make sure we got appointments, make sure we can inspect your vehicle to make sure it needs everything that, that we need for it. And then if it is a safety recall and it is something very serious, you might even come get the car, right? Well, so, sometimes we may be able to come get the car. We may be able to put you in a rental. We even may be able to uh, get your vehicle towed in here for you if you'd like us to. But we want to make sure we get safety recall repaired as soon as possible. Okay. So once again, if I get one of these or I hear about a recall, call first and get that VIN number and it's about what? I mean, 17 digits. 17 lines, digits. 17 digit lines. Call us up. We'll let you know exactly which recall it is and then which, which way to proceed from there. Okay. And that's the number right there that you can see from the outside. Yes, sir. And yes, hopefully sir. you can take a picture of it with yourself. You can do that too. And it's also going to be on your letter too. It's also going to be on your letter. Your VIN number will be on your letter. So if you can see that VIN number, just call, call with that. We get that taken care of. Okay. Great advice. But again, the one thing, you get this letter in the mail, don't just throw it away. No. You got to take care of it. Take care of okay. it as soon as possible. Yes. Daniel, thank you very much. That That's was fantastic information thank you. about all the recalls yes, here at uh, North Park Toyota of San Antonio. And once again, Auto 101 is brought to you by the folks at North Park Toyota of San Antonio. Okay, still ahead on SA Live, what does it take to be a cowboy? I got a taste of life out on the range. My Try It Tuesday. And we're giving you a taste of Valentine's Day creativity with crafts that you can do for your sweetheart. That's up next on SA Live. We are getting crafty today with fun and creative Valentine's Day ideas. Christy Campbell, co-owner with DIY Studio, joins us today to show us a few projects to add that personal touch to your Valentine's Day decor. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. So what are we going to be making today? Again, all sorts so of stuff. Today we're going to be making a personalized tray okay. and a pom-pom wreath. All right. And the tray is kind of like these, where it's you use a stencil and... Yeah, exactly. And you can customize the stencil. You get to paint whatever color you want when you come in. So you can fully customize it. Okay. First of all, let's talk about your studio just a little bit. Yeah. And this is a mother-daughter business? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's me and my mom doing yeah. it together, yeah. And okay. anybody can come there? Yeah, you can walk in. You can make reservations. We don't do it by class. So y'all could come with a group, and everybody can do something different. And I guess the nice, the nice thing is, and BYOB, too. Absolutely. You can bring wine, snacks, anything. Oh. <laughs> And all the stuff's there, which is nice, too. Instead of, you know, run, scav scavenging around your house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, and the best <laughs> part is we clean up. Ooh. <laughs> I love that, too. So Even you can better. bring your own, yeah. your, own, you your own wine, your own snacks, and they'll and clean they up after. And they clean up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So how do we get started with okay. this right here? So first, you're going to just do a nice light coat, not too much. Okay. And just kind of lightly go over it just like that. Like we'll try way. to get on just the blue part. Yeah. It's okay. Oops. You know? Crafting gets messy, we can I, always I fix dribbled. it. It's all good. All right. So, so while you're doing in. that, mm -hmm. yeah, now, fill that in. make a stencil, what do I, I mean, because I would just cut this out with a razor knife, right? No, so we make that for you. Okay. If you just come in, we have a bunch to choose from. Or if you want to make like a custom one, you just email us, give us your idea, and then we can cut it for you. So oh, when you come wow. in, it's there, it's ready, and boom, you're done. So we could send you that, and you would make a stencil out of yeah. the ESA Live logo. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh! Yeah, see. <laughs> Guess what you're getting for now? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Always thinking of me. There yeah. you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is a pom pom. Wreath. Yes. Okay. And so instead of making each pom pom by itself, we take a, an old picture frame. You wrap it and tie it. Once you cut it, it looks something like this. And then you cut them on. You get all these little pom poms. Oh so my gosh! If so you want to take peasy. one, okay. We're gonna fluff them and trim them, and then you just tie it on there. That's it. And that's it. Oh, this. my gosh. Now, do you host, of course, team building parties and bridal parties? Absolutely. We do a bunch of group discounts as well. So you bring in the bigger the group, the more discounts you get. Um, we can personalize bridal showers or weddings if you have certain signs or crafts you want to make. And where are you located? We're at um, Sunset Ridge, 6408 North New Braunfels, right yeah, next right to, to the McNay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right down from... Uh... Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yes, okay. two doors oh. down, exactly. And then, um, which I was told it's Baskin Robbins. All right. It's not so flavors. then once we're done, yeah. we're going to take this, you're going to peel it off. Oh, here we go. Here's the okay. final step. We're going to peel this back. Get that off. Okay. 
So take that and then peel it off. And you have Valentine's Day it. specials too. Correct? Yes, on Valentine's Day, we're doing a two for one on select okay. projects. And then we'll, we'll be offering complimentary beer and wine. So you can grab your favorite takeout. So you don't even have to BYOB. Exactly. Ooh. Not that night. We're going to be giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting better and better. And so, long, so. so if you wanted to, if you drew something up and like a cute little phrase or whatever your pet name is for your Valentine, mm -hmm. you could put it. Is that funny, Jen? <laughs> yeah, you just send it over to us and we can do your name. A certain phrase that you like Jen to say. Jen thought of her pet name for her husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool. I like this. this is awesome. Cool. And then these and little then pieces we just got to take, take out. Take those out of there. Okay. Just like that. Take those out of there and that would be the finished product. Yeah. Yes. And there you go. have a big just event like coming that. up, a Valentine's Day cookie decorating class, and that's on the 10th. From uh -huh. 1 to 3. Yep. And once again, you're over there at uh, Sunset Ridge, 6408 yes. North yep. New Braunfels. Go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. We have provided a link. Christy, thank you very much. Thank you. Still ahead, shed the pounds in time for your Valentine's Day celebrations. How Sculptway can help you target those trouble spots. And next on SA Live, it is a Try It Tuesday with a country twist. I'm trying to do a little roping while riding a horse. Yeah, see how that goes. That's definitely great. All right, rodeo is just a couple of weeks away and we got to do some uh, rodeo things. And today, horseback, and I'm going to combine that with my talents of trying to rope. Well, we are out here at Hidden Springs Youth Ranch and I've always wanted to do this. I've learned in years past how to rope, but now you got to do this on horseback and I'm going to learn from an expert, Sage Rue. So how hard is it not only to rope, but rope from a horseback and what do you think? scale of one to 10? You know, it, it starts uh, on the ground and then you have to kind of learn your horsemanship and then bring them slowly together. So it's it's kind of a process to okay. get but to that the, point. The analogy that you used, I would have never thought that you compare this to? Golf. Yeah, golf swing. Angles and uh, you know fluidity in your swing, okay. timing, all those things come into play. First, you look like you have a fairly balanced loop. I'm going to move it just a little bit like this. Okay. And I'm going to let you drop this tail here. All right. This middle part in between your hands, if you go like this, yeah. that's your so that'll be your spoke. And that allows how far your loop's gonna go. So you'd be starting to the, to the left a little bit, and like you were swinging earlier, just around mm -hmm. and around, and then just follow it around the horns. Kind of like this. And let, just like that. And let the wrist go in? Exactly. So as I aim for the middle, it's just gonna naturally kind of want to flow around. Yeah, okay. exactly. All right. And you said the other thing is my left hand's gotta go forward too, so that, yeah, you just that way I'm follow not. follow it towards your target. Okay. Nope. Nope. Let the force of the of my swing take it to the dummy. And that's where it comes into the horse deal. You start swinging like this and you speed up mm -hmm. right before you throw your horse. Just like this. Just like that. So I got the speed going here and I can just, ah, there we go. Just like that. Ah, okay, and it was just kind of, yeah. don't don't force it, just let it the go. The harder you throw it, the, the more your loop closes up. I gotta keep it up and. There it is. There we go. Okay. There it is. All right. Um, Far from being an expert at roping, but now we got to combine the two, right? Like yes, you do, and it's on horseback and doing this. That's the next step. That's the next step. Okay. And then we're gonna have to bring them together. Do I call it? Oh, yeah. First, we're gonna figure out how to keep a leg on each side of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel every movement you make. Mm -hmm. So staying real quiet, roping, you're gonna be going really fast, and you're well, not I gonna. Am? You're, <laughs> we aren't today. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so you need to have really good steering. You know, I can move her just with this one hand and right. if I need to move her whole body you know laterally I'll use a leg I'll push if I want to go to the right I'll push with my left foot anytime you're riding it's just you have to be real balanced when you're roping because if that horse stops like they're going to if you're healing that horse is going to stop as soon as you rope 
And if you're not sitting where you need to be, you're gonna end up over there. <laughs> and give this a shot here, okay? Wish me luck. He's already moving his head and making sure he's out of the way. <laughs> Smart horse, aren't you? So I'd be coming out of the box, and exactly. I'm doing this, and I'm just gonna go. Follow through just a little bit more, and you would've okay. caught that one right there. Seriously, I'm right here. Follow all the way down there around the horns. Just like that. Yeah, perfect. Rodeo, here I come. He's the expert, and that's why you're going to be seeing the experts like Sage at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo starting February 7th. On a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do? Can you give me a nod or something? Don't quit your day job, Mike. <laughs> you guys did that. Hey, by the way, the PRCA Rodeo Camp is March 11th through the 14th out there at Hidden Springs Youth Ranch. <laughs> Gotta go see a man about a horse. Next on SA Live, how Sculpt Away can help you look and feel your best with their weight loss option. Plus, earlier we asked you, what's your spirit animal and why? Amber says, I got a hummingbird, one of my husband's favorite animals. Aw. Uh, keep them coming. you've struggled to lose unwanted fat and you've tried all the diets and gimmicky gadgets, well, we've got a book that you may just have been waiting for. Shannon Schimmel and Kay Overly, co-founders of Sculpt Away and beauty shaping experts, have written a book revealing what you don't know about body fat but need to know. For the first time ever, they're revealing their, these secrets to you in their new book, Body Contouring 101, your guide to getting the body you want without surgery. Okay, we're gonna start with you. And this book came together through years of clinical application, research, and experience, right? That's right, Fiona. You know, Shannon and I both were on the ground level of non-invasive body contouring. It's a new medical field. And we wrote this book because people need to know the things, everything we know that we've learned. And in this book, folks can learn how to make their body basically work for them, right? Yeah, you need to know from the very get-go. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the book's going to talk about eight different kinds and characteristics of fat, all the way from some that are easy to treat, some types are more diff challenging, and there's even a type of fat that burns calories like muscle. Wait, you don't want to eliminate I, that. I, I was going to say, I need more of that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> And we also talk about meeting nutritional requirements because most people don't realize that lack of certain nutritional elements actually leads to weight gain and fat gain. And meeting them with supplements mm -hmm. actually leads to fat loss and weight loss. So there's actually five different categories of supplements. There's foundational nutrients, there's fat burning nutrients, there's fat blocking nutrients, detox, and sleep enhancers. All of these are gonna meet your needs. And Shannon, in the book, you guys show people how there are ways to give those stubborn inches a little extra help, a little push, right? Yes, there are actually topical products that you can apply and a massage cup you can use to help promote inch loss in the privacy of your own home. And we can tell you how to get them in the book. So you guys really do help break down for folks what will work best for them between you know non-medical treatments and at-home treatments. Exactly, yes, there are over 40 different non-medical body contouring devices. So we really break down the difference between all of them and help you make an informed decision on what's going to be best for you. Thank you so much for having me out, ladies. Always a pleasure to come here to Sculpt Away and tell folks how you help people. Well, at Sculpt Away, we specialize in giving you the body you want. And we do that through non-invasive ways, nutritional ways, topical ways. In fact, we've hand-selected everything that we do based on our experience and feel like we offer awesome solutions. Well, you guys have helped me out, so of course I absolutely adore you guys. So you have an anniversary event coming up. Tell folks about it. Yes, we have our anniversary coming up. It's January 31st from 4 to 7. This is your opportunity to get a free signed copy of our book. The first 10 callers will receive the signed copy and they can pick it up at our event. And that event is, of course, Thursday, January 31st from 4 to 7 p.m. here at Sculpt Away. <laughs> and, of course, folks can order the book, right? Yep. 
They can order it from our website or Amazon or Kindle. Well, for more information on Sculpt Away, just call 210-227-3051. That's 210-227-3051. Remember, the first 10 callers get a free copy of Body Contouring 101, so make that call now. Or just head to the website to pick up the book, SculptAway.com. Tomorrow on SA Live, we'll give you a taste of Korean cuisine on wheels, where you can grab these delicious dishes on tomorrow's Elder Plus, we're moving into rodeo season with these folklorico dancers. That and much more tomorrow on SA Live. Earlier, we asked you, who, what Aww. is your spirit animal? Vicky says, hers is a dolphin. Very, an Mary elephant. Partner, hi. Yeah, very, because they never forget. They never forget. No, they don't. And Greg says, a butterfly. I kind of like that. I was trying to read what no. it said in the little print, sorry. <laughs> I don't read the fine print, just sign it. So, hey, coming up tomorrow, it is a Wild Wednesday with an American bison. Yes. Very cool animal. Very, very, very cool. Yep. We'll learn all about that if they're over at Natural Bridge Wildlife Ranch. And folklore code dancers, mm -hmm. because, of course, can you believe rodeo is right around the corner? I can't. Yeah, starts on the 7th. It's already so. time to rodeo, San Antonio. And I didn't know what I learned in my horse story. Oh, horse's what? teeth always, they constantly grow. I didn't know they didn't have to follow them down.